What I do want to do is continue uh, from what God laid on my heart, uh, talking around the, uh, the, the Christmas message of when Jesus was born. And just God showed me some really wonderful things about law and grace around that whole um, message with, you know, when John the Baptist was born and when Jesus was born. So just, just pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word. We, we love the word of God here and we love just to hear from you. And, and uh, Holy Spirit, I just love how there's just so, so many depths in the word of God as we just study and, and, and look at things, how you just reveal things to us. And uh, we just thank you again today that as we, we read your word and as we... Um, Lord, take your word in, Lord, that you will just change us. We'll, we'll be different when we leave this place because we've had an encounter with you and with your holy word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last Sunday I was talking about um, Mary and when the angel visited her to say that Jesus was going to be born and, and um, I harped on a bit about how the fact that Mary's name means obstinate, rebellious and bitter and Patty, Pat put on his hand my mary is not bitter <laughs> which we've seen this morning she definitely isn't but the wonderful thing and mary just talked about name changes is that the angel said you will now be known as being blessed among women amen so every mary really your name means blessed among women <laughs> that's what the angel said so he made that change <laughs> but it was great to see that uh, and you know, and she was troubled with that. And people, people are troubled about grace. You know, when when you tell people who definitely feel like they don't deserve the grace of God, when you tell them that you know, Jesus loves you, God, God loves you, Jesus died for you, He wants to bless you, He wants to favour you, they're troubled by that because they think, well, I don't deserve that. <laughs> and that's the whole thing about grace: it's undeserved, unmerited favour. We didn't deserve the grace of God, and that's why he, he died to, to save us. That's the wonderful thing about grace. So don't be surprised. You know, I, we had a lady who, we, after the Bali bombing, she came to church, and um, she didn't go up the front for the, you know, the salvation message, but she talked to us later. She said, I, I didn't feel I was worthy of that. I didn't feel I deserved that. And that's often what can hold people back because they, they sense or maybe they've been taught that they have to work their way to God. They have to be, make themselves worthy of what God has done. And that's the wonderful thing about grace is that um, we could never do that. <laughs> and, and Jesus did it for us. Amen? So something that the angel said to Mary and also to Joseph as confirmation is that they were to name... Jesus, name his name Jesus, which means Jehovah is salvation. And so we see uh, in Luke 1, the angel said that to Mary, and we see in Matthew 1 that Joseph is told that Mary will bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, and for he shall save his people from, from their sins. So Jesus means salvation, but remember before Jesus was born, uh, Mary's cousin Elizabeth had a son and his name is John and John means grace and so we're going to talk about now will you remember that what John did is he actually prepared the way for Jesus so grace is grace that prepares us for salvation Amen. when you look at their names it's grace it's not the the harshness of God it's not the um, you know, being told that God is a judgmental God that actually prepares us salvation. It's actually grace that prepares us salvation. Because Jesus came and he actually let them know that God's a loving Father. And um, let's read Luke one forty one in this account with um, Mary and Elizabeth. And in verse 41, it said, It happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. That, the word, guess what? The word leap in Greek actually means leap. <laughs> but it means to leap for joy as a quickening. And you know, at the arrival of salvation, grace leaps into action. <laughs> grace, when salvation arrived in, in Mary, grace leaped inside 
of Elizabeth. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? Because the response to grace is salvation. And so when we understand the, the, the goodness of God, it leads us to that place of salvation. And in Luke 1 and um, verse 57... It says, Now Elizabeth full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And when her neighbours and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. And so Elizabeth was barren. Remember, she couldn't have children. It was a miracle that she had a child. There was two miracles happening at the time. There was um, the virgin birth, but there was also the fact that Elizabeth was barren and her child. And so, you know, here they're calling their, they're about to call their child John, which means grace. And so it says, when she gave birth, the neighbours and relatives heard how the Lord had shown her mercy and they rejoiced with her. It was the grace of God on her life. She didn't do anything to deserve um, having a child out of her barrenness. But the, the grace of God came on her life. And guess what? Their relatives saw it and they rejoiced. And, you know, when the grace of when people understand the grace of God and then it leads them to salvation, the neighbours rejoice. <laughs> Especially if they're a, if they're a, uh, loud and they're a drunkard and they get saved, the neighbours start rejoicing. Woohoo! He's changed. <laughs> and then when we keep reading on, it says so. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. So tradition was that when they had a son, they would name it the same as the father. That's what tradition said. So we're going we're gonna to talk about some name meanings. So we've already talked about um, Mary's name, John's name, Jesus' name. Zacharias actually means remembered of Jehovah. Now, just just follow this with me because... When you remember someone, what do you remember? You remember the good and the bad, don't you? When you think about someone, you think, well, I can think of all those good things. It's funny how we remember people. Oh, you know, the, uh, that, that tall guy or that guy with the big head or that guy with the, you know, the, the, the funny arm. You know, we have these things that we remember people. But when we remember things of people, we remember the good and the bad. Is that correct? We're not God where we just remember the good. We remember the good and the bad. So... Remembering good and bad equals the law. That's what God did. When, we, when the children of Israel you know, were um, you know, chosen by God and the law came in, God remembered what was good, but he remembered what was bad. And so the law said, if you do good, you, you're blessed. If you do the wrong thing, you'll be cursed. So Zacharias is actually a picture of the law. However, let me, let me read on. So when it came to the circumcision and naming the child, they wanted to name him Zacharias, which is a picture of the law. But his mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. What does John mean? Grace. <laughs> Thank God for spiritual mums. <laughs> she said, No, he's not going to be a picture of the law. He is going to be grace because God was making a change. The angel, see, there was a transition that was coming from the Old Testament now to the New Testament. Actually, Jesus said that John was the greatest prophet because he was there to prophesy the change that actually was taking place. And so in that change that was taking place, here's everybody saying, no, this is how it should be done. He should be called the law, the same as his father. And the angel said, no, he's going to be called John. And Mary said, no, he's actually, he will be called Grace. Isn't that amazing? There was a shift taking place. And then 61, and it says, but they said to her, there's no one among your relatives who's called by this name. Um, actually, let me just go back. Um, why, another thing why I said about uh, it's a picture of the law, because in Hebrews 10, 16 to 17, it says this. This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. I will write them. And he says, their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. <laughs> So what happened in the Old Testament? He remembered their sins and their lawless deeds. 
But the New Testament, which is grace, is that I will remember their sins no more. And so that was the transition that John was actually preparing the world for, that there it was about law, now Jesus is coming and it's actually going to be about grace. And so there was a name change. So, so the, the relatives and the family got a bit upset because they, they're saying to, to Elizabeth, hang on a sec, you can't do this. There's no one, th this is not tradition. Okay, now they start to bring, do you remember, you know, when, do you, have you ever seen when people try to make a transition from law to grace, that, tra that uh, tradition steps in <laughs> and says, no, you can't do that? And this is what was happening here. They questioned the name change and th that she was breaking with tradition. And then in verse um, 62, they made signs, so they thought, well, Mary's saying, no, 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 we're going to name him Grace. So then they go, all right, if we can't get to Mary, we'll go to the Father. <laughs> we'll go to the authority, we'll go above her, and we'll say, she can't do this, she can't make these changes, he's supposed to have your name, okay? And so they, verse 62, they, they made signs to the Father of what he would have him called. Remember, if we go back when the angel appeared to Zacharias, then uh, he was actually mute because he didn't believe what the angel said. So they're making signs and, and uh, they're saying, they're making signs to him saying, hey, your, your wife, Elizabeth, wants to change the name, doesn't want to have your name, wants to call him a different name, and she's breaking with tradition. And so they appeal to him. So he asked for his tablet. You didn't know they had Apple back then, did you? And uh, that sort of technology. <laughs> the, but uh, he motioned, give me my tablet. <laughs> Actually, Moses, the first, first one in the Bible who had a tablet that was downloaded from the cloud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he asked for his tablet and he wrote this. His name is John. And so they marveled. Do you know people marvel when, when people break from law and break from tradition and start relating with God on, on the basis of grace? They marvel at that. They think, how can that be? You know, this is not how we relate to God. You, know, you, you look at the whole book of Hebrews. It was all about Paul encouraging people to come away from that old system, that old system of the sacrificial system. Yeah, even while the temple was still there and saying, no, now you are the temple of God and now you relate to God through Jesus Christ, not through a priest and not through sacrificing um, animals. And so, you know, and the ones that were starting to move away from that and starting to uh, operate under grace were being persecuted for that. So, so he says, no, 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 this, that... Uh, he will be called grace. Now Elizabeth, the one who said, okay, this is how it's going to be, her name, and we have an Elizabeth, we have two Marys and an Elizabeth here today. So Elizabeth's name means God is an oath or God is abundance. So just stick with me with this thread as well. What does that mean, God is an oath? Well, the only time in the Bible that God made an oath and swore by himself is in Genesis 22.16 and it's all about grace. <laughs> and it says this, And he said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord. And he's talking to Abraham when he was about to uh, plunge the knife into his son. He says, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you've done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, Blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars are in the heaven and the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. It's the only time that God made an oath and swore by himself that he was going to, as we call it, the covenant of grace. Amen? It's the Abrahamic covenant. It's the covenant of grace. And God... Um, God actually confirmed it at, at the mount, <laughs> at Mount Moriah, with an oath. And so Elizabeth means God is an oath. What is his oath? 
grace, that he will bless and he will multiply um, uh, Abraham and his descendants. So, Elizabeth means an oath of grace. Zacharias means God will remember everything. And Elizabeth and John are told that their son will not be called God will remember, but that Jehovah is gracious. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? Have you ever heard this stuff? I didn't get this from anyone. I actually just got this from the Lord as I was just studying. It's, it's, um, it's cool. So, they appeal to the father. Zacharias asks for his tablet. And he writes his name, which means grace. Then a miracle takes place, and he was mute because of unbelief. But at, the, at him writing the word grace, his mouth was opened, and his tongue was loosed. And, you know, what I love about the Bible is how it just all interconnects. <laughs> you know, here we're talking about these names and how it connects back to Genesis, and it connects with Romans. And, um, and so it, it says here... In verse, we'll go to 63 again. He asked, he asked for his tablet, and he said, His name is John. They marveled. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue loosed, and he spoke praising God. So that reminds me of Romans 3, 19, which says, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. <laughs> So Zacharias, which means the law, because he didn't believe, because the law can, leads to unbelief, and that's what happened with the children of Israel, his mouth was stopped. But the minute he actually said, Grace, my son will be called Grace, his mouth was opened. Amen? <laughs> because that's the whole thing. When we try to justify ourselves, when we try to use the law, it shuts every mouth. And so we come to the point where we just are open for the grace of God, and then our mouth is open to proclaim the grace of God. Amen? So he pro proclaimed grace. And then 65, the, then fear came on all who dwelt among them, and all these sayings were discussed throughout all of the hill country in Judea, and all those who heard them kept in their hearts saying, what kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord is with him. So now the response of the neighbours and friends, first they're trying to stop it. They're trying to say, no, 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 he should be known as law and tradition should follow. And if you won't do it, we'll appeal to the father. And, uh, and, and the father goes, no, he's gonna be, he, he, we're going against that. We're going against law and we're calling him grace. And then when they respond, they actually, they, they actually start saying, wow, look at, look at this. And... What's this going to mean? First, a fear of God came on them, and then they said, what kind of child will this be? In other words, let's watch him and observe. Do you know when you come from law into grace, people start watching you? <laughs> it's like, you know, um, when people, people will stand around and watch a, watch a fire burning. And so people will, will watch you. I mean, we've, we have people in this village... That, that are constantly watching us because they, one, we were, I was in the tavern one day and um, we were actually a friend of ours was playing and uh, a lady came up and offered us a glass of wine and uh, she had a bottle in one hand and a glass in the other so she offered her this glass of wine and so we said thank you and actually no, Brenda and I observed, she was, she kept looking at us and uh, and I, I said to Brenda, Did you, have you noticed this lady keeps looking at us? She goes, yeah. And anyway, next minute she comes over with a, a glass of wine. Anyway, she says, um, I've, I've been watching you guys. She says, I'm thinking of coming to church. She says, I'm not a church person. But she said, but she said I've been watching you. I watched how you handled yourself in the floods. I watch how you pray when you're at the Anzac service. And they, people are watching. But you know what they're watching? They're watching the grace of God. They watch how, how, we, how we react to life and things that are going on, but we react because of the grace of God. Amen? That's how we live our lives in the grace of God. And you know what? People watch that and observe that because they don't, they're like they say, you know, you're the only Bible they may ever read. So they're get, trying to get a picture, and especially 
um, in an area like this which is new age and I found most a lot of the new ages came from Catholic backgrounds or Catholic schools and so they already have a perception of what you are and what you should be like and how you should speak and how you should act in fact a lady that I used to go be next door to the market she said I must come to church one time because you just tell the best jokes <laughs> And then she goes, oh, I met a Presbyterian minister and he was a good guy just like you. It's almost like it's strange, you know, like they expect me to, as a minister to be some, I don't know, I don't know, you know, probably like a, a real staunch, you know, um, fire and brimstone sort of judgmental person. And then they get, they get, you know, often with Brenda and I, if we're places, we don't like to tell them we're pastors straight away. We just want them to get to know us and then surprise them with the pastor card, you know. Because if you tell them straight away you're a pastor, they have a perception of what they think you are and what you're going to be like. And so here, all this is going on where it's like, no, well, they're having a son, so this is how it's going to be. And cause, cause he, um, because Zacharias was a priest. And so, okay, he's going to be a son of a priest, and so, you know, he's going to have the same name and this is actually going to be the tradition. And they said, no, no, no. We actually heard from God. <laughs> I know that's strange for a priest. <laughs> but he said, we actually heard from God and God said, no, his name shall be Grace. And they were marveled and they said, well, we're going to be watching this one. And we're going to be seeing what actually... And they said, the hand of the Lord is upon, is with him. Amen. That's what people see. They see the hand of the Lord is on you. They see that God is actually blessing you and, um, and it doesn't all make sense. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? And so Zacharias, now that he can speak, he actually was filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you notice that what happens with grace is that there's the filling of the Holy Spirit? They come hand in hand. Grace and the Holy Spirit come hand in hand. When, when, when Elizabeth... Um, when, when salvation came, uh, grace leapt and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because he, here's another thing. The people think that they don't deserve the Holy Spirit because they have to try and earn that as well. And the Holy Spirit comes by grace. Amen? If Jesus didn't die, we wouldn't have the Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful, gracious gift of God. In fact, um, when he gives gifts, they're called grace gifts. And so he's... Zacharias is filled with the Holy Spirit as he's talking about grace and then I'm going to read out what he prophesies and uh, we'll just and we'll um, finish there he says blessed is the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David he's spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and remember his holy covenant. Look at 73, verse 73. Remember what I said, what does Elizabeth's name mean? Look at what V says in 73. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. <laughs> he confirms what was, actually, what was said. That Elizabeth's name means the oath. What oath was that? The oath that was given to Abraham that we would be a blessing. It's the covenant of grace. He actually says it in his prophetic word. To grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, the child, and you, child, will be called prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of God with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. That was news to them. You know, he's talking about salvation through the tender mercy of God, not through the judgment of God, through the tender mercy of God. So he talked, he was full of the Holy Spirit. He talked about redemption, salvation, the oath that was given to Abraham, holiness and righteousness. And then he says to prepare the way of the Lord. So grace prepares the way for salvation. It's not um, the other way around. It's not grace then salvation. Uh, sorry, salvation then grace. It's grace and then salvation. And then in John, we're going to finish with this scripture. So in 1 John 29, 
when Jesus meets, when John meets Jesus, and I'm going to replace John's and Jesus' name with grace and salvation. So the next day, grace saw salvation coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Isn't that interesting when you change those words to what they mean? Grace saw salvation coming and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Before that, he was actually going to be called remembered of, of Jehovah. And what happened in the Old Testament is that sin could not be taken away. In Hebrews, it talks about that they, the priests would minister daily um, sacrifices that could never take away sin. And so the shift was now being taken place from law to grace. And so John was called grace, and he says, see salvation, and he says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen? <laughs> so, Lord, we just thank you for your word. Lord, we just thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord God, that it's your love and your grace that leads us to salvation. And, Lord, I just pray that, um, especially in this coming year, Lord, that we will just get so many great opportunities just to be able to share, Lord, the, the, the love and the favour and the grace of God. And, Lord, that people will just come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And everybody said? Amen.